There's no need to execute me, Sir Devos. I'll be dead before the dawn. I just want you to know. I wish the things I did. Everything you did brought you where you are now. Where you belong. Home. Maybe we should have stayed married. You were the best of them. What a terrifying thought. Theon. You're a good man. He said I'd shut many eyes forever. You were right about that too. Brown eyes. Green eyes. And blue eyes. Welcome. It can never be said again, Theon Greyjoy does not have balls. Metaphorically speaking, maybe the most ballsy move ever was to charge Night King to save his beloved Bran. It cost him his life. And then, like a thief in the night, young Arya comes swooping from the darkness and pounces on the Night King, the King of the Dead. He catches her, takes aim at her life, and the diminutive dynamo maneuvers her dragon glass dagger to fall into her right hand, and she kills the seemingly impenetrable ghoul. And the dead succumb, and tears drop the blue eyes of a dragon as he implodes. A girl has a name now. She is the Night King Slayer. This is Men of the North, and your Unsullied are here to precap Game of Thrones final season, episodes three and four. Eric Nordquist is here. He represents the House of Fan Cato. Paul Charchian is from Fanball Fell, and Thrones Techie, it's Aaron Gleeman from BJ Landing. I am Sir Paul Allen, <laughs> Unsullied, Men of the North, Welcome to the podcast. How's everybody feeling today? I didn't sleep well. I mean, I yeah. I, I, I was just churning through that episode all night. Ooh. It was uh, there was so much to take in, and this was the cumulate, cumul, cumul, cumulation, 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 yep. cumulation. It's it's cumulation. I don't know. Good heavens! Of seven and a half seasons, right? Mm-hmm. To get to this point, yeah. you know, we've we've known this was going to happen at some point. Eventually, we finally got there. And the payoff was epic. Do do we, if there was a post-killing press conference with <laughs> Arya speaking, any idea how it would go? Because I think in Belichickian-like fashion, there would be a lot of on to King's Landing. In other words, members of the Thrones media would be like, when you were in the library amongst <laughs> the dead and they were lingering, how did you get out of that on to King's Landing? What was your thought when you came swooping and pouncing on the King of the Dead on to King's Landing? Because that's probably that's what we're on to, right? We're only focused on Cersei's green eyes right now. Right. That's all we're focused on right now. Uh, what an unbelievable climax to that episode. Uh, and and it, it had it felt like it had to be Arya. It felt like that was the right person to do it. How it occurred uh, in everything, you know. And, and Charge, I want your thoughts on this based on our email and text exchange. It's kind of the the build up through the series was always that the dead are coming, winter is coming, and a lot of elves are going to be taking place. And the Night King, this ominous figure that we never really got eyes on on a regular basis, now as season eight approaches, he's the A topic. How are we going to survive this onslaught of the dead? And in one episode, it's one steel dagger to the chest, and uh, and suddenly he just. In one episode, he comes yep. and goes, and he's gone, and, and it almost, the buildup to his importance in this series, in some ways, was just extinguished in a second by Arya's dagger. It really was, and I don't have a problem with that. I mean, to me, he was never a, a an enticing bad guy. You know, Joffrey was an enticing bad guy. The oh, yeah. Night King was, you know, he, there was no personality. We didn't know his right. motivation. It was more the idea we didn't even know who he was. Yeah. yeah, he was just sort of this threat, This right. just sort of this vague threat. So I have no problem that he just sort of got dispatched, and, and that was the end of it, because he was never a main evil character yeah. in the way that Cersei or Joffrey was, as or, or uh, uh, the Bolton, uh, Ramsay Bolton. I mean, those were really evil characters yeah. who you love to hate. You never had that with the Night King, so I have no problem with his ultimate and relatively fast uh, uh, dispatching at the end of the battle. The other thing is, like, yeah, it was all in one episode, but the episode was one and a half episodes, yeah, basically. Yeah. So Thrones techie. I didn't mind it that much. The other, like, even in spots on last night's where, the, like, a typical villain in those spots 
would have given like a one liner yeah. or would have made like some mm-hmm. he they did not give him he made like maybe a tiniest smirk or something like that yeah. after uh, Daenerys tried to burn him with the dragon and he basically just stood there yeah. but but yeah there's no that the only it. personality is sort of what you're reading into a blank face at that right. point. And so, yeah, I, I didn't have a huge problem with – I mean, we talked about it last week or even the week before on, on the show that Charch was basically saying he was leaning more towards the likelihood of that, the end game. not to steal a different thing that came out this weekend, yeah. was not the Night King. Time! Props to Paul Charchian yeah. in the first Men of the North podcast. Mm. He adroitly predicted the – culmination of scenarios with the dead will be done mid-season. Right. And then the families fight for the Iron Throne the rest of the way. Crip <laughs> claps, please, yeah. for one Paul Charchi and for <laughs> nailing yeah, that. Yeah, well yeah. done. Well, thank you. I think it was the only way narratively that was going to make right. sense. And to me, as, as, as epic as this battle was and mm-hmm. this episode was, and it'll always be remembered, I, I believe, these next remaining episodes, four, five, and six, yeah. are going to be way more interesting as we get to the final maneuvering for, uh, for for the throne. And and this is going to be, to me, what I love about Thrones. Yeah. The whole yeah, series I has been the machinations and the politics and the backstabbing and all of that is yeah. going to come down to these last three uh, episodes, and I can't wait. The foreshadowing of episode four and maybe uh, episode Z. Four, five, and six definitely will take place today on Men of the Thrones. Uh, we we record this podcast, Men of the North, uh, the Unsullied, the day after a Game of Thrones episode. So there is some recap to it. To wit, there and maybe I'm the only one here. There was a time, uh, honestly, I thought the living had no chance. I mean, when the Night King was raising the dead, I I honestly thought this is going to move to episode four. The living have no chance. Yeah, and I kind of. The way that I look at it, and one of the reasons that I adored this episode, and we can get into some aspects that weren't perfect about it, at every at different points throughout the episode, every major character, you thought this was it. Right. And it was it was Daenerys. She's surrounded, falls off the dragon, taking L's that way. Sam well got to take a nap and didn't die. <laughs> yeah, he's he's yeah. Li- he's just that laying was there. Had a nice cry. Come on. He walks Jeez. up to the front line of the army <laughs> with a couple of dragon glass daggers in his hand. I mean, it Whatever. was just preposterous on its face. Yeah. If they uh, need if they needed Sam to be alive at the end of this episode, they should have put him in the crypt. Yeah. yeah. Right with Gilly. Yeah. Right. You know, go there with your you wife go. and your and your kid. Yeah. And you know, I just. Just, there's like seven people left alive. Exactly. And he's yeah. one of them? Come on. That's but right. you, have, you have the Night King. There's that standoff. It's, oh, it's going to be Jon Snow chasing down Night King. Yeah. And yeah. surrounded by corpses, they will fight and some sort of victory will be had. He mm. just raises his arms, upraised the previously dead. So I'm thinking Jon Snow is aft. Yeah. Well, then... Uh, Daenerys comes to the rest. So every different character. It was it was Jamie and Brienne at times. Uh, the Hound was in precarious spots. And Arya running for her life. Yeah. And she'll deserve time to, to be talked about all on her own. But I thought that was the brilliant part about it, is at different times, every single character that we love and respect, I'm thinking, this is it. They're done. Yeah, right. And they found their way out of it. And think of like how much time we've spent, and everyone else like us, trying to predict what's going to come next, and yet scene to scene while watching it live, I had zero confidence in my ability to know what was going to come next. Mm -hmm. And I mean, given all these sort of theories that people write and all the hours and days people have spent trying to map out what they think is going to happen, I think that's sort of a victory in itself for that episode. It's like, there were probably, I don't know, there wasn't really scenes. It was just sort of jump cuts to different locations. And every time they would do it, I had no idea what was going to happen. And like Nordo said, I thought everyone was in constant danger. It turns out really... Some maybe B squad people got killed, but well, none of the majors got. But yeah. don't doesn't except it, for Jora. Doesn't it doesn't it come down to how significant you felt the Night King was in Game of Thrones? Because it's like there there is some angst from the dark web of Thronies that no major players in the show are dead. Right. Mm-hmm. Where I I I mean the Night King's a major player. Jora is one of my favorites personally, but if you say he's not a major player, I understand that. But isn't the Night King deemed a major player? Well, I think people are complaining about just the convenience that here we are, you know, three episodes in, you just had this massive epic right. battle, you know, of all humanity, and all the major characters lived. Right. Yeah. 50,000 yeah, people died, but the 11 right. we like all exactly. lived. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a fair criticism. Well, and, and another part of it, too, is the E ultimately... 
um, in this show, they have laid groundwork for things that you think are going to happen and, and systematically, regularly throughout. It's never worked out that way. Well, for once, truly laying the bait of having Bran out there, that actually came to fruition. And you see it throughout the series as well, where typically when one of your favorite characters is encountering some strife, uh, they're dead and they're done. Mm -hmm. And in every single one of these cases last night, they found a way out of it. And it was simple with the dagger to the Night King. Everybody falls and now they're just... they're si Samwell Tarly on a body of the dead, crying. Yeah. He's not fighting anybody. How about the How fact? How does he make it out alive? It's ridiculous. The fact that like ten thousand Dothraki lasted about fifteen seconds, <laughs> and Sam Tarly's just kind of hanging yeah, out. Yeah, right. Yeah, and he survived. I did like. I thought. What you said about how they sort of set you up for an expectation and then yeah. pull the rug out yeah. was, and they set that up from the first <laughs> memorable scene, which was uh, Melisandre comes oh. and lights up all the Dothraki swords. Have yeah. them raise the swords, and yeah. then they go out, and oh. that was like an amazing scene that yeah. was to, to watch awesome. the light of thousands yes. and thousands of them, and you, and then they flash to uh, Danny and John are sitting up on the mountain or whatever, saying like, "Ooh." We got a chance here. Yeah. And then to have those all extinguished within yep. like 10 seconds and a couple random horses come yeah. come flying back in. I thought that was an amazing scene. I, you know, imagine you're, you're, imagine you're Daenerys. You've worked so hard to get your yeah. get your Dothraki. Yeah, got them yeah. over the You've water. You've shipped them all yeah. the way, investment. halfway across the planet. Yeah. You get them all the way here. Yeah. And they yeah. go charging into the undead. Yeah. And they're, and you know, five minutes later, they're all gone. Yeah. They're all dead. Hey. Men of the North, The Unsullied, is a precap. We recap the previous episode. We preview the next episode. That part's coming up shortly. Uh, just to get to close uh, close to the conclusion of the recap part, just think for a second, near the end, Game of Thrones, Battle for Winterfell, um, episode three, when they kept cutting from Khaleesi and Jorah the, under siege, yeah. Jon Snow in front of the 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 ice blowing dragon, yep. mm -hmm. and Theon with the Night King approaching. They kept going cut, cut, cut. Think about the level of anxiety or the the hyperventilating level we were all experiencing yeah. at that stage of the show. I, I also think it kind of served the quick cuts like that and jumping back and forth to make you forget. And not think, hey, where's Arya in all this? Right. And so it was a mm -hmm. true like sneak yeah. attack. And I didn't like yeah. that last scene. I thought was real powerful and like the the knife switch. It was like Jordan uh, in the ninety one final yeah. against the Lakers goes crossover. up with the right hand, yeah. switches to the left hand. But like I didn't love that she could just after all that she basically just runs up on him and stabs him. Mm. I yeah. thought that was like a little bit of a, a well, letdown. But why the, the fact that I liked it, they were able to make me. She's a silent assassin. Yeah, but what was stopping anybody from just running up on him for the past three years were the episodes, basically? Like, well, you saw that that he sensed her coming. Yeah, I mean, right? Like, he spun and grabbed. If, if yeah. you want to argue about anything, it's it's it is odd though that he has had seemingly this this impenetrable power. Mm -hmm. Right, like he can do anything. I mean, I, I assume he's the one that's creating the storm as yeah. the dead, or yeah. you know, they're neutralizing the dragons yep. in that moment. Uh, which, by the way, next time before you put the Death Rock, Death Rocky out there, why don't you lead with the dragon? Yeah, <laughs> why don't you yeah, start no with kidding. the dragon yeah. before no you kidding. said soften them up with the dragon? Just soften them up with the yeah. dragon, yeah, then bring the Death Rocky. Yeah, we in. all have flown on airplanes that have gone above Montana and endured moderate <laughs> chop. Yeah, the moderate chop that that they were enduring on those dragons, Jon Snow and Khaleesi, that took like forty minutes. It almost ruined all of Winterfell yeah. because they couldn't get back. Um, the uh, the last thing I'll put on in terms of the the, the recap, I don't know what you guys thought about it. Melis Melisandre just showing up out of nowhere yeah. uh, suddenly becomes, I think, you know, from lighting the swords, uh, lighting the trench, yep. and that interaction that she had with Arya. And Brown kind of eyes, green eyes, blue eyes. The callbacks, yep. you know, what do you say to the god of death? Yeah. Not today. You know, those little bits. Like, she ended up being the most prominent character, really, outside of Arya in the entire episode. Yeah. We hadn't heard from her uh, in two years. Um, although, Frey, this, although this podcast, I think, in every episode said she was going to play a major role. Yeah. And it was never, yeah, we you know, there was never any doubt that she was going she was going to be a pivotal yeah. figure. We just didn't know when. Yeah. That's what we do. We foreshadow better than any Thrones <laughs> podcast you will find. Correct. Like when we spend 20 <laughs> minutes saying, hey, Night King wasn't uh, present at the end of season two. He's on his way to King's <laughs> Landing. Yeah. So 
many people thought that. Yeah. To wipe yeah. out the freaking gold company. I'm um, going to cut Brand's hand off. And- <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> it. that's right. That's Come on, man. I was overwhelmed by the episode two limbs. Now, um, Frey or Fry? Walter Frey or Fry? Fry. Thank you. Wait, no, Frey. Frey. Walter Frey. Uh, okay, so Melisandra, you know, when she's having the confab with, with Arya, lays it out. You know, you're paraphrasing, you're going to kill brown eyes, Walter. Yeah. Blue eyes, Night King. Cersei, green eyes. I see a darkness in you. It's Cersei, green darkness. eyes. It, it, yeah. I it's, see it. eyes staring back at me. Yeah. yeah she it, has to. Now she, that's is, the and we know we know Cersei's on the list right. at the, at the, and yeah. probably the last name left. Yeah, wow. I mean, there, there's no doubt in my mind. Yeah, it's if it's not Jamie that's going to kill Cersei. It's, yeah, it's going to be Arya. Right, hundred percent. It's it's you know, I, but I want the Jamie Cersei showdown, mm-hmm. right? But like, do you so think I assume gonna... it's going to go Jamie Cersei showdown. Cersei wins. Right. Arya Cersei showdown. After that, Arya wins because they're setting it up. The Jamie Cersei aspect of she's going to start telling people it's Euron's kid, and he's going to be upset about that, and that's going to further, like, completely turn him against her if, she, mm-hmm. if he isn't already. But also, he, he knows it's his kid. He's not going to kill his sister, kid. If you house your sister, you don't want the kid to be yours. Well, he's already had, like, 30 yeah, of them. Right, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's had a problem. Yeah. 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 Right. This still he's, goes he's back to the, uh, the mildly creepy angle that Jamie dies. And Arya uses his face, and they're in a that's, moment of intimacy. That, love it. Yep. And the mask comes off, and, and Arya says goodnight. Mm, that's, that's been my prediction since last, yeah, last well, summer. Now, now that Arya is just, it's just my weird Arya's dream. Arya's just having no. sex with everyone now in this thing. How about, but. That's a nice 18 hour stretch. Yeah. You get laid for yeah. the first time and you kill, <laughs> kill the night. Yeah, 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 that's that's pretty good. You know, <laughs> uh, come on. She's on the heater right just now. Just a vibe. Yeah, you know how like prize fighters, like boxers, they won't have sex before a fight because like it weakens legs? Yeah. She had the opposite effect. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then she's just yeah, yeah. flying through the ability yeah. was yeah. unbelievable. Okay, uh, Paul Charchian, uh, fanball.com, part of Men of the North, the Unsullied. You get the opportunity and take as long as you want. It's um, We are the pod squad to foreshadow not only into the next episode, but stream your consciousness for where you think things go. And yeah. you get first crack because of the unbelievable tout in episode one <laughs> of Men of the North that the dead and the living will have all bets settled middle of the season, and then it will be between the families to assume the throne. Take it away. Well, I, I think we I like to look at this with, with each of the major characters and what's coming next for these characters. For John and Daenerys, they got obviously they gotta figure out their power struggle situation and who is going to be the one between right. them. And they you know, this has got three episodes to play out. This thing could go a lot of different directions. Um, I don't have a strong feeling on how it's going to go, except we know John doesn't. John doesn't have aspirations for the throne, yeah. so I think he's just going to acquiesce and just go. You know, I'll you know I'll I'll be beside you, and you sit on the throne. Uh, she had a moment last night's episode to let John take the L, and she came back with the dragon. Yeah, and she blew up Good those point. walkers. True. Yeah, and uh, basically fended them off, and they ultimately they're climbing on the dragon while he went to go and help Bran. So I mean, in a big spot, she helped him. Yes, yeah. uh, Tyrion. In quiet fashion, I thought the moment that he had with Sansa in the crypt was was very, very interesting. Heartwarming. No, virtually either important. no dialogue or virtually no dialogue between them, yeah. right? The holding and, of hands and, yep, and all of that. And, you know, I wonder if this isn't the beginning of a, a possible scenario where those two, in some fashion, throne? end up together. Right. Maybe even on the throne. Their previous scene together, Whoa. they were joking around where she said, basically, you were the best of all of them. Yes. Where right. he was yeah, like, well, right. that is sad. Like, yeah, that is and sad. then she was right. like, it will never work out. And they right. were like, had such a joking yeah. way about it. Right. Even It was a little bit of gallows. Jesus. So here's here's the scenario. How could if you If you not? believe, like I do, that Arya's going to finish off Cersei, does right. Arya want to be queen? No. Who would Arya trust to take the throne? Right. Smartest Sansa. person she's Sansa. ever known. Smartest person she's ever known. Yeah. Sansa takes the throne. She's and she decides to either marry Tyrion or make him the hand. He's mm. been the hand the whole, you know for right. you know all this time. Yeah. You know and he, and he's the hand. I think Sansa and Tyrion are going to end up are going to end up staying attached. Uh, Cersei, she's got to attack the depleted North, right? If she doesn't take this opportunity, I she's love been this cutthroat. Angle. Cutthroat the whole time, right? Yeah. So you, so you so think she'd be apt to go north? Versus... She needs to go north now. But she's going to have to know she? how depleted right. and fatigued a, said uh, north is off the battle. Word, yeah, word will get out. Right? You just had Ravens. a battle of fifty thousand yeah. people. It right? depends how good the intel is, because she's going to be. If the intel is not clear cut, this thing has been cleared out. 
she's not going to want to go there if she thinks there's any chance that there's still White Walkers around. But well, if she gets I, I, clear I intel that it's the coast is clear, right? Then, and there's seven people left standing right. in Winterfell. Then you might as well just march in there. But the the preview for the next episode didn't make it seem like that's happening. Like the preview for the next episode made made it seem like all right, they're kind of figure things out now at Winterfell, and then I'm going to guess that it's going to be the next two episodes from now when they show up at King's Landing. The, fo maybe. the focus of the video we saw in the previews was all of them still in King's Landing. Right, yeah. So they're toasting each it. other. Right. They're, they're yeah, celebratory. Yeah. Yeah. Off, the, off what we saw from the preview. Um, and you guys are elite, in-depth Game of Thrones minds. So I'm going to hit you with a question. And if you don't know the answer to the question, A, I apologize. And B, we will figure it out as we move along. We'll edit it out of the podcast. Yeah. Here's the question. In the preview of episode four, one of the scenes we saw was two dragons flying over Euron's fleet. Right. Okay, so now we know, despite the one dragon, uh, the one that Khaleesi it rode. It looked like one got taken down. Right, with, uh, with all the dead on it, shook it off, now we got two. There's something, from what I understand, called Dragon Binder. Who's familiar is. with Dragon Binder? Now, oh. this may be something from the books, okay? But I did see it because I spent, like most of us did, two hours texting and talking to people or looking at Twitter. And there in the dark web of, uh, of the Thrones world, I mean, oh my God, forget the theories. Some of the information you get is priceless. Right. There's something called Dragon Binder that supposedly you're on has access to. Yes. And it is something that controls the dragons. And this is legit. It's from the books. Okay. It's something an adversary can use to suddenly gain control of the dragons. Like a mind control type of thing? Let's go to the dragon binder desk. And uh <laughs> well, I'm still try I'm still trying to pull it up, but it is a dragon horn. Okay. It's a horn. Is, yeah. That is supposed to silence Ooh. everything. Like the Vikings. And, I'm not kidding you. That this dragon binder bit, you know, when we're doing Men of the North, whatever, and praising Paul Charchi and again for uh, predicting something about Tyrion, uh, Tyrion, Tyrion, <laughs> dragon binder might be a part of this. So your theory. This is not me uh, yeah. suggesting hang a freaking limb from the red tree and right. suck the Night King <laughs> in. This is legit Game of Thrones dark web terrorism. So you're saying you saw the, the preview for episode four and the assumption that they want to give people is... The two dragons are about to attack right. Euron's fleet, but, but you're maybe, saying maybe he just maybe controls Euron them. took them over, and yeah. they're leading his fleet. That which I mean, at that point, then the Winterfell crew's down to like six and a half people. Right, mm -hmm. they have no dragons. No dragons. Uh, I, at that point, I think I would just you know follow Samuel and maybe just take a nap. <laughs> let's uh, let's go to the Dragon Binder desk. <laughs> <laughs> Nordo <laughs> made the mistake of Nordo. How his much phone have up. I ruined men, men of the North for you? Okay, now guess what. You guys can go ahead and, and you know, there's a three-eyed raven. There's also a three-chinned host of <laughs> Men of the North. And you guys can go ahead and chide me all you want about this dragon binder thing. I'm telling you, it it I'm not, I don't even know what source it came from, but I bet you it's involved and it's all fun and games until Khaleesi and Jon Snow are riding these dragons looking to wipe out a freaking armada. And then the dragon binder takes place and all of a sudden it turns around and wipes off what's wipes out what's left of the unsullied. Uh, speaking of Three-Eyed Raven, let's let's segue to Bran for a second in his future. Everyone's favorite, Bran. Don't care. Just Can we just be done now? I don't even need to see him on screen <laughs> yeah. again. He's, he's good so, for nothing. He's good for nothing. He brings nothing right. to the table. He's I been, think his best thing he's ever been is bait. Your new nickname should be Joffrey because you are so freaking cold-hearted. <laughs> My God. The I, kid got pushed out of a freaking window and became a cripple. Okay, can't you can't you at least I like him feel than, his pain? Now that he's the three-eyed raven, all he is is annoying. And he brings he brings Charge, nothing Charge to the table. Charge him better when he was just a peeping Tom. And he was just <laughs> hey. like, yeah, that's right. I like him better as a, as a little pervert, <laughs> hey, frankly. Hey, if 90% uh, of players in the NBA were as chill at the foul line as he was, or kickers in well, football games. what was he going to do? Run away? You can't be any more <laughs> chill. He had nowhere to go. He had the Night King bearing down on him. He was chill. Night King tilts his head like, whoa. Why are you so relaxed right now? Mm. Because my sister's about ready to jump on your back and freaking house you in your chest, and then on to King's Landing we go. It was funny to see whatever, like, because the Night King can't say anything and yes. can't really yes. make faces, but they still had him do the you found it? cliched movie so. villain thing 
where he takes his sweet time yes. murdering his opponent. Yes. And he lets yeah, somebody come right. literally jumping in. Yeah. Where he's like, let yeah. me raise my arm here so I can get my sword. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I mean, and also he just strolled like montage style, like it was epi- sort of like Entourage or something from you know the the woods that they came out of to yeah. get to Bran. It's like well, I'll just walk here at a leisurely pace. Yeah. Right? And so in theory, I agree with you that like Bran added nothing in terms of like charisma or anything to that episode, or even like one liners really, or acting. But the theory of, or <laughs> acting ability or really anything, they could have put like a cardboard cutout there. Right, Come on, really, but. Why don't you guys lay off the grip on Kip, please? the theory was basically that he had that whole thing kind of planned out, right? Like that even every little distraction or every little fight that the White Walker crew had to put up with (laughs) led them to that exact second when Arya could come jumping in. Okay, now we're about to go to the Dragon Binder desk (laughs) because I believe it's assembled. And this is a podcast, so we don't have any leaders from the House of One Foot (laughs) (laughs) telling... Telling us that we have to go to break. So let's go to the Dragon Binder desk time. and learn more about the potential <laughs> of not only episode four, but the rest of this season being compromised if you are a fan of the dragons. So during one of the books, it's his fourth book, it's called A Feast for Crows. Euron arrives with Dragon Binder. That's exactly what I read, the, the crows bit. It's a gleaming black horn, six feet long, bound with red gold and Valyrian steel. Said to be crafted from the horn of an actual dragon and discovered amidst the smoking ruins of this Valyria. This is big. Charge is mad at me, but this is big. Dragon Binder is purported to have the power to control dragons. Thank you. When blown, the ancient Valyrian glyphs carved into its band glow white hot. When and blown. The, and the sound it makes is like a thousand screams. Those who hear it feel as if their bones are on fire. And the man who blows it in the books, uh, one of Euron's sailors, collapses with Ooh. blistered lips and blood wow. seeping through his chest. Medieval carcinogens. So the question is, is that of marriage, the Golden Company, and of everything, could Dragonbinder be the finest gift that Euron is planning to present uh, present Cersei yeah. in exchange for her hand in marriage? See? Uh, because this, under that pretense, would be able to uh, mitigate dragon-related influence okay. at King's Landing. Charge, can you please, for 10 seconds, at least pretend you're <laughs> moder- moderately interested he left the room. in my dragon binder theory? Well, I'll be, I will be upset if they do this, and here's why. With all, you know, for, it's great <laughs> that they made passing right. reference <laughs> to <all> this <laughs> in book four of the 3,000 pages that have been written. He'll never shut up. <laughs> the show has had no reference to it, and if it you, uh, if no. As far as right. I know, the show has had no reference to Dragon, Dragon Binder. Binder yeah. And if suddenly, <laughs> at the very end, they go, oh, and by the way, there's this thing that will ov- that will allow us to control the dragon. Right. Okay. And they throw that at us at the end. I'd be, I'd be like, okay. what? Where'd you you're pull just, that out? You're of? just still mad because you don't think that only Targaryens can ride dragons because all those guys... You stuffed but they that. Did. But, but they, they did. Roll hey, on the dragons Paul Charchi and Fanball.com, as Men of the North, the Unsullied goes... He's on the Iron Throne. Okay, did you come up with a prediction that said the dead would be dead in the middle of the whole thing? No, and, I didn't. Okay, so he's on the throne. I thought so. I bend thought the, the freaking knee. Yeah, yeah, the, verbally bend the knee right now, Biatch. I'm not, be- I'm not bending the knee. <laughs> bend the bend knee, Biatch. The knee. No. I'm oh. having secret meetings in the crypt right okay. now. Okay, and by the way, in closing here before Charge <laughs> continues to uh, foreshadow, Every, you keep mentioning the gold, the Golden Company. Yeah, what's it called? Yeah, the, the I think it is company. the Golden Company. Yeah, the doesn't it doesn't it sound like a place you would take a wedding ring post divorce? <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to or some just... aggressive group that is unstoppable with weird elephants. <laughs> yeah, ten cents on the dollar. The yeah. Golden Company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? I paid thirteen grand for it. Look, you're already stuck enough. So take a grand and we'll call it even. We can give you store credit. Uh, here's a uh, spender uh, strategy. Yeah, I got a VCR for 50 bucks if you want it. <laughs> All right, I got some secondary character uh, stuff for you guys. Okay. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the Hound lived, and we are setting up for the Hound V Mountain. Right. Brother it's and coming, brother. and it's going to be it's gonna be an epic, Club epic game battle. Oh, yeah, unless the, unless the Hound taps out like he did in episode three. Well, it, there was fire everywhere. I understand that, right? but, I mean, in the Battle of All Battles, you can't come up soft. Well, and he did. He didn't in the he biggest did. spot, though. You know what he did? Great point. When he saw Arya struggling. Yep. That's that That's, love and yeah. care moment yeah. that just that periodically makes, they, makes kinda, for him. they make Hound yes. a very likable guy because they do. he jumped to attention when he saw Arya in trouble. Will Thorman Giantsbane and Brienne 
finally now hook up. <laughs> now that it, you know, God, they're, you they're, see them there's really not even a lot of choices like, left for either one of them. Yeah, we're really right? learning about Church's kinks here. Well, what, <laughs> about <Jamie? laughs> what about Jamie and Brienne? Well, just a Jamie, couple of nights. Brienne respects Jamie, but I don't know if that's going to be enough. I don't know that that means that they're going to hook up. And I don't even know if Jamie's interested in hooking up with her. Like, like clearly, Thormund is. But Jamie, Jamie wants it. Well, Jamie's a beaten man. I mean, his, his, hair, his hair color is changing more quickly than mine. Where I, I start to look like Michael McDonald in like three days. He has one hand. He gave up leadership to uh, to Brienne. Well, I mean, outside of knighting Brienne, he basically was like, I serve you. So you watch him in the battle. He should have died 15 times. Yeah. I think Jamie's yesterday's news. Yeah, he yeah, might be. I, I think we want that payoff. I hope, I hope. frankly, I hope they give it to us. I want, his, nice. I want Arya to get his face because that is the best storyline. One that I just created. Whose face? Jamie's face. Jamie's and face. then kills Cersei with Jamie's face. Yeah. No, that's I, a storyline yeah. I created, yeah. episode one, <laughs> Men of the North. Just like, see, it's it's the Thrones version of Do the Opposite. Yeah, right. <laughs> I love it. Mm. Uh, all right. Uh, last, uh, last secondary character, Sam. He lived, improbably, yeah. as we My described guy. earlier. He's still, he's got to have his big moment where his intellect saves the day. And I think there's still, there's still that thing is coming for him right. where he's going to have he's going to have this big thing that he's going to there's going to be some problem and he's going to use his intellect to get somebody out of a jam and, and help the cause mm-hmm. uh, one minor thing in this mix first of all and I, I just can't go back to it enough if you wanted Sam to live and continue to yeah. put, put him in the, in the freaking crib yeah. it was so pointless and just frustrating yeah. and kind of but, they got lu- but they got lucky in the, in the crypt of battle. they got lucky in the crypt you know, they they got lucky in the crypt that Arya came flying in and and did what did what she did to the Night King. Or they were all done in the crypt. Well, no, they were. They were by the way, troubles. they were they were they were grossly under not understaffed, but from a <laughs> weaponry weapon standpoint, they had nothing. Yeah, it was ridiculous. What are they going to do? Kick these zombies in the spot? Like uh, that, knock off their makeshift penis? So I was. I two things there. First of all, I was happy in the end that they didn't go the route that I had pictured, and that would be like. Headless Ned Stark. That would be, <laughs> right. you know, cat, you know, Rob Stark running around trying to kill people, and now right. Sansa's got a, you know, dragon glass with right. dead brother. That would have been too much. <laughs> but they should have put Sam in there with those two they daggers. Should've. They should have. Instead of putting, you know, God bless uh, Aaron Gleeman, uh, Thrones Techie, putting our Samwell Tarly yeah. on the front, front lines, lines yeah. with a couple of, uh, you know, no. little sand diggers And in then him probably having him live. It just, it just no. so absurd, right? Yeah. Just, you know, I want to believe show, every show, really, I want to believe even the improbable, mm-hmm. but don't make me, don't make me believe something that's ridiculous. Yeah, just with and these that's little what sand the, that's, And him I, living through that battle was ridiculous. I can tell you, while we were watching that, I turn to uh, beloved BJ, as PL likes to call her. From BJ Landing. And and as they kept showing he the bear? Samwell like sprinting over and fighting, and I turned to her and I go, he would be so out of breath. <laughs> Just let me tell you, like, there's no chance. It's like, a, a physical aspect. Like, believe me, like, I walk down three flights of the stairs. Come on. And I'm like, oh, that's it's it adrenaline, okay? When Bite Squad arrives, <laughs> that is you true. don't I have do the sprint. same adrenaline <laughs> he has being chased uh, by, by a member of the dead. And I do start crying when I get that notification okay. on my phone that <laughs> Bite Squad. So two episodes ago, <laughs> yeah. What's up with Bron? So Bron, two yeah, episodes ago, was he's a sent, sent north he's with a the player. crossbow. Yeah. Now the army of dead is gone. Bron has to represent himself. Yeah, that's a great point. Another that's as well, a great point. Faced yeah. with a big decision against Tyrion, which Tyrion, I, I, I don't think he does it, but he's going to be in the mix big time. I think this mm-hmm. Sunday. Yeah, yeah, I know. I agree. The I other thing is, like, appear. just in general, Cersei's plan. She seems to know. Or she seems to be confident for whatever reason. Like every time they show her, she's half drunk on wine and got a big grin on her face. And people give her bad news and she goes, oh, that's good news. Mm -hmm. She must have come up with some kind of plan to shoot down these dragons that is even more, a couple steps beyond the crossbow situation that they came up with the first time with uh, Kyburn. Is Cersei sexy or sadistic? Oh, sadistic How about all the both? way. You yeah. Now, season one and two, Cersei was yeah. kind of hot. It is my Cersei, experience. Cersei, you know? yeah. I'm oh, bored with oh, the, the shame, shame thing. The shame hair. The shame, the shame, the shame hair, hair not, yeah. it killed it all the new, off. The short hair, oh. the short hair does not work. Um, Let's get Aaron, that hair Aaron Gleeman, the Thrones techie from BJ Landing. Um, he is a Thrones techie by day, editor-in-chief of Baseball Prospectus by night. Let me ask you this. Okay. Samuel Tarley, yeah. what's his war? What's his wins above replacement? Because clearly he's difficult <laughs> yeah. to replace 
or else he wouldn't have taken a freaking siesta on top of 50 dead people for 15 minutes in the lift. Yes, in that battle, in that episode, he was exactly replacement level. He, yeah, was, he was just there. <laughs> Previously, he's pretty good. He's yeah. like an all-star level guy. Yeah. Yeah. But in that one, it's they could have called up somebody from AAA yeah. and had him just sit on a pile of dead bodies and cry. I mean, you can claim some guy okay. waivers and have him do that. Okay, now finally, as the metrics of Thrones go, uh, yeah. Jon Snow's um, Bossip. His batting average of swords in play. <laughs> what is it? I mean, he didn't really. I'm trying to think. Like Danny, I thought had a disappointing episode from like actual oh, action God, standpoint, yes. and so did Jon Snow. Really, yeah. well, the, because the dragons got neutralized for right. you know, basically the and whole he had, episode. He had yeah. big plans, he which started, was a buzzkill. It was a, it really disappointing. I think for me as yeah, a I viewer, thought, like not only was the like the choreography of the dragons kind of lacking, but also yeah. you couldn't see. I couldn't, I couldn't tell see what anything. was going right. on. Because it was so dark, and there's no, this. there's no like, yes. they, they needed to be like color coded or something, okay. so I could tell no. which dragon yeah. was which. Well, no, that, that I mean, not not to in lemming fashion, like like regurgitate all, what we all saw on Twitter Sunday night. Right. Okay, great. Uh, we I'm going to roll the dice that all four of us have pretty night, pretty decent TVs. Yeah. Okay, yes. with high definition, and you know, rooms were darkened, whatever. So. The best pop possible viewing opportunity was presented to all of us. Mm. It was dark for yeah. all of us, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what, and how, not just dark. But well. how do you fix it? I didn't here's, mind here's it. the thing. This, it gets a little bit technical. But, oh, great. You know, HBO has struggled to meet the demand <laughs> mm -hmm. of all of the people who want to see the show. Mm -hmm. And there have been technical outages and various, you know, for various services and everything. Okay. So what they what they do when you get when you get an image, whether it's cable, whether it's satellite, or well, anything other than over the air, thanks Panasonic. They com they can and will compress the yes, image down. Right. So you've got your beautiful high def TV at one at, at 1080p or yeah. 4K, but they'll compress it down so you're not getting a resolution that's oh. nearly that high. You're getting 480 the, or something. You're getting like a 480p. Right. And, so you don't so break the all, brightness. So all the artifacting and all the all Can't the dark and everything is in no small part because of the compression that they oh. did to service the billions well, of us Which, that were watching it yeah. at one time. King's Landing is sand snow. Okay, the uh, the majority of it can trans can uh, transpire during the course of the day in beautiful HD, and then all the snobs can be happy. I, I my hope is that if I go back and rewatch it now when there aren't everybody's not watching yeah. it at once that oh, they'll well, still I'll get an uncompressed so version. Of it. I watched it this morning. Yeah, did and it I was any annoyed better? by how dark it was, so I yeah. watched it on my laptop and I yeah. cranked the brightness completely up. And I also like t put all the shades down, yeah. put all the lights off, and it it definitely helps. Sounds romantic. But there are still mm. yeah, I was by myself. Uh, then I know it eating was some romantic. pretzels. It was real, about nine fifteen this morning. <laughs> so right, as, exactly yeah. as you pictured, PA. Uh, and it was better, but there was still probably like ten percent of the show where unless you have like a magnifying glass, you have no idea what's going on. End so, of the sorry. equation. Did we care about this? I didn't care about it until I saw it on Twitter. You didn't so care did. about the darkness oh, aspect? I well, no, I, and I knew during the course of it, I was hoping Cotton John, with whom I watched the show, wouldn't complain like my TV was of the L variety. You know, because I was just assuming it was yeah, for everybody. It was not your, right. Yeah, it wasn't you. I, that's what everybody on Twitter, I posted on Twitter right after. Everybody else have a hard time seeing this yeah. thing. Okay. It was just me. And everybody's like, well, I thought it was just my TV. Okay. I thought it was just my TV. Right. I thought it was just right. my TV. I'll no, tell you, was, I, that was I, all thought it was, I thought it was dark, but it added... I, did, I, I didn't have the exact same problem then because I was still able to make out all the faces and all yep. that. Um, I thought it, it added to the chaotic, moody yeah, nature. That's true. That's uh, interesting. Um, so, you but know, see, but unfortunately, you it, it wasn't able to be executed on some TVs because of the, the technicality aspect, but I thought uh, the vibe of it for me was perfect. When that's this thing comes out on Blu-ray... It's going to look like a whole different battle, wow. and it's going to be beautiful, okay. and you're going to see it uncompressed, and it's going to be great. But the version we saw was made it difficult to see what was going on, just difficult to distinguish characters and yep. dragons and the whole thing. So is there was, any was is there any level of anguish that we are at the midway point, uh, the second half kickoff, right around the way, uh, right around the corner, boom, and we're off to King's Landing. Can we get a coach's interview during halftime? On that this? Um, <laughs> that Night King is done, and that the whole dead bit's done. Any anguish with that, or I'm is this happy. exactly? Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, because like you know, when we chatted about this at KFAN or KFAN.com, I mean, months if not a year ago, I kind of envisioned dead and living to the end 
nobody lives, nobody on the Iron right. Throne, and a tumbleweed blowing through King's Landing. Right. I was sort of with you on that. I thought there was a chance of that happening. But I'm if I, I, it sort of comes down to, the like your question comes down to really, how much faith do you have in the creators and the producers of the show? Because to top this, to put this in episode three, mm-hmm. and they know everyone's going to ask the question that PA just asked, which is, are you? I mean, this was supposed to be the big climax. Where do you go from here? But if you have faith in the creators of the show, you know that they have something bigger and better than this. They're not going to go three more episodes where it's just a bunch of conversations sitting around the fire. Yeah. They clearly have, it might not be episode four, which my prediction for episode four is it's more like getting things resettled. Agreed. Getting healthy. Yep, totally agree. Figuring out how many weapons you have left, how many dragons yeah. you have, and all that. And then episode five will be another big battle. And then episode six is just sort of picking up the pieces. Everything. Like you just mm-hmm. have to figure out where you're left. But. I'm. I guess I'm relatively confident, and I'll be disappointed if it's not the case that they have something even bigger planned because they have to know that people are going to have watched this and go, "Wait, how do you put this in episode three? What do you do for the next three? Well, I think I think the battle with the dead had to be as epic as it was because they closed the book on it so quickly, and now Night King's out of the right. mix. But really, you know, as as much as there was so much fear about the Night King and and winter is coming and all of this. The, the true basis of this entire series and story is about fighting evil among men and the battle for the throne. And the Night King, you know, and, and the weird thing about the Night King, by the way, is we don't actually know for sure why he sought out Bran. And maybe it's in the books, and they kind of, they led to it. It was a part of one scene where Bran's like, I know everything. And if, you know, he wants an internal night. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. I have well, the history in my head, so... Right. Cut it all out and all that, but hey. but I think I think the true the true ending of this and where they go from here is the basis of the entire series, and that's fighting uh, human evil. Okay, well there has been a theory through Game of Thrones for quite some time, and for whether you believe it or not, whatever it'll play itself out, that Bran truly is the or a Night King. Okay, now he was super chill and composed in front of the King of the Dead when he warged. He immediately went to the Night King. So there is a theory out there that what transpired at the end of Episode 3 strengthened those who believe Bran is in some way still tied to the King of the Dead Hmm. and that he will reemerge. He is a good guy or a bad guy? Does he uh, now? Can he control? The story that could he control <laughs> I like, the dead? I, I, like, the I only like read the, the first four paragraphs. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's he's the new king of the dead, but he's a real cool guy. Like, yeah, don't worry right. about Let's it. go to the dragon binder desk. <laughs> yeah. By the way, with Brad, just mm-hmm. another point to just how I mean, utterly lame. He is. You have Theon and his guys. Theon, Theon, I off, love Theon. Firing off yeah. arrows. For their lives, yeah. just trying to just stick it out yep. and keep breathing. He's got his eyes rolled back, oh, yeah. like yeah. he just took a ten strip of acid. Oh, no, he, he, <laughs> he's some, back there smoking ravens, seaweed. Some ravens just flying around in the sky, just eyeballing the situation. Yeah, what's so he supposed to do? He's blacked out while everyone else is trying to save him. Nah, okay. he's, he's good for nothing. Okay, right now. well, remember how Charge got the crip claps for the prediction. When Bran was so composed, so chill, had such a connection with the Night King, there's something up between those two. There might be. And when that emerges in episode four, five, or six, it is Sir Paul Allen. Um, Who not, read it on the internet. Not the three, uh, three-eyed three raven, the three-chinned host. He <laughs> will be the one for finding it on the internet who gets the crip clap. I'm going to give PA credit for this. He takes a real shotgun approach to theories. Yeah. He, yeah. You put out 50 of them, you only have to hit on one. <laughs> Brand's biggest contribution is that he said that Theon is a good person. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. That completed it for yep. Theon. Thank right. you. Uh, whatever he needed to self-actualize yep. his situation, yep. uh, he immediately... I mean, Hey. The spear run-on bit didn't work. <laughs> no. uh, Fija, Fairness and Jorah Act. Uh, seriously, we we somebody has to credit and mention the dignified nature of that individual, how it ended for him, what a servant he was, and the fact that Khaleesi, Daenerys Targaryen, was humanized more than at any moment of Game of Thrones yeah. when she was bawling over her beloved Jorah. No, that was a real great scene. I also like the touch that... Charge is emotionless he's, like Bran. He's getting stabbed. He's getting. <laughs> yeah. He's falling down. He's getting back up. And then he's as soon as everyone drops yeah. and he realizes she's safe, yeah, he's, the he's one dead I like in 12 yeah. seconds. Yeah. 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 
So, Paul, what are you never going to hear him say again? Galizzi. <laughs> um, before we uh, continue foreshadowing and or put a close to Men of the North, through seven seasons and three shows, uh, Eric Nordquist from the House of Van Cato, we begin with you. Who is your favorite character and why? Ooh, that's difficult. Um, I want to say Arya because over the last few seasons, she has been built up and uh, clearly culminated in this last episode with the biggest murder of them all. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, for me, it's been Jon Snow. And uh, it's easy to pick one of the favorites. I get that. But with, with Jon, just the, the, the honorability, uh, never curling to opportunity, never curling to the negatives. And uh, in, a, in a show with very few constant protagonists, mm-hmm. uh, he has fought and put himself on the line many times to remain that guy. And, uh, and it's, for me, he's just been the most delightful character. Paul Charchian, the king of the house of one-eyed penis, who is your favorite character and why? Tyrion. I love the transformation uh, from comic relief, which was basically his only role early in the show, to somebody who was semi-serious as the handy, you know, some good advice and sometimes not. And, and, and now he has become a, you know, a major intellectual factor on the show. He's yeah, been much. humanized very much. He's, I think he's just a, he's just a, we've seen a very human transformation with him right. that, I, that I really like in that character so much. And I, I believe he will stay alive through the whole show. And I think that ultimately he will have a, a certain amount of revenge against his sister, and I'm looking forward to that whole arc. Thrones techie, AG. Well, I Tyrion is also my favorite. I also like all the stuff Church said. I agree with. I also like how he's the one person on the show who has no real battle fighting skills mm-hmm. and no real like superpower aspects to him. Yeah, or Sam, but and, yes, yeah. But I mean, and he still has remained hugely important. In all kinds of different regime oh, yeah. changes, mm-hmm. in all kinds of different scenarios, and also he's just funny as a character. Yeah, like there's so many. Go- Even last night, like when he's talking to Sansa, one of like the two or three humorous moments right. in the whole episode came from him. Uh, I also think Samuel's a pretty good character, but of course I'm going to say that because if I don't think he's charming, <laughs> who's going to think I'm charming at that point? You're the best, Arya for me. Uh, not only not only does the girl now have a name, uh, the Night King Slayer. Biggest moment in the history of Game of Thrones, arguably. Right. Uh, she was the lead vocalist. And um, I like her silent assassin nature. I like her demeanor. I like uh, her snarky nature. And um, I, I love Arya Stark. Jon Snow's close to Nair Stark. Arian's close. Any chance in uh, episode four or forthcoming, Daenerys becomes diabolical. Like, like, oh, yeah. like narcissistic, diabolical turns on everybody. Because the throne is all she wants. Yes. Well, one of her quotes in the preview is, we just won the Great War, now we're about to fight the last war. Right. And, I mean, they kind of set that up, and we're we're analyzing a 60-second preview, so maybe that's that's an L in its own right. But just, uh, she's now in a position where she sits at the head of the table, Mm -hmm. and she's going to lead the charge down to King's Landing, or however that that all shakes out. Yep. Um, I think that... The, the most unresolved portion of it is how she's going to handle Jon Snow. Yeah. And even I, I mentioned it earlier, she saved his life in a big spot in the episode last night, maybe part of the greater good, getting to Bran and preserving the, the potential victory against the dead. Yeah. Uh, but when we were, I was watching the replay leading up to episode three last night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how pissed was she when she found out? I Bro. mean, that's as unresolved as it gets. Yeah, they, they literally was, had her turn her whole body. I rewatched it too. Yeah, like yeah. her oh. whole body language changes and everything. Yeah. Um, any um, in closing, certainly with an opportunity following episode four to uh, to change opinions. Um, Iron Throne, end of the entire thing. Uh, Paul Charchian is combo platter. Sansa, Tyrion. I'm, San- I'm Sansa. Yeah. Okay. Team Sansa right now. Nordo. Yeah, I'm 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 on Sansa. Mm-hmm. And that, that was one of the storylines we talked about at the beginning of the podcast, into the season, and and I think uh, the 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 weird connection she had with Tyrion in the crypt yeah. last night, I think, is a big deal. Aj, I mean, I guess I'll just go Daenerys just to be different. I feel like it'll <laughs> they'll set it up so that Jon Snow will be in position to, if he wants to, he could step forward and take it, and he mm-hmm. won't take it, and she'll mm-hmm. take it. But the other like the other question I have is like, do they even have aside from the two dragons who are injured? Do they even have the manpower no. to take over here? Oh, like no. on one hand, they they sort of you know like in in baseball, a guy in the on deck circle will take swings with a donut on yeah, his right. bat, yep. and they'll take the donut off and right. be like, oh, this bat's really light. On one yeah. hand, you just defeated the the dead. 
Yeah. So you're really good at fighting. Like the level of fighting that that took, you should go into King's Landing and just clean up. On the other hand, they just don't have the numbers. They might have like 900 dudes at that point. So that is like to me the biggest question. They can't like, win. They can't win right now. Yep. As it stands right, right now, cheating. they can't win. So what if what if uh, your guy Bran See, there is you somehow go. connected to the Night King? Yeah. He raises all of the dead Oof. and then brings them to King. That's King's what I was Landing. saying earlier. Oh my God, God. Bran was good or bad. You guys are stealing yeah. my bits. Now you got yeah. a whole new crew. I hope yeah. he, he, he I hope he raises all the Dothraki. Dead uh, dead they get dead. all excited again and then they just get slaughtered in like another eight <laughs> seconds and they're just like, oh come on. Uh, Nordo, House of uh, Fancato, Paul Charchian from Fanball Fell, and uh, Aaron Gleeman from BJ Landing. I'm Sir Paul Allen. Thank you very much for listening to our Unsullied podcast, Men of the North, 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 Men of the North.